the Checkered Pony. Um, this is episode 11 of the Checkered Pony podcast. It's been a while since I was with you guys, but once again, I'm feeling the pressure to just get back in this and to really commit to doing this every week, if I can, every two weeks, at least. <laughs> I mean, it's really something that I enjoy doing when I can just focus on getting it done. Um, I love feeling like I get to spend time with you guys. I'm so excited that um, our group is growing and that um, my subscriber number is increasing. Um, I'm really hoping that as I get closer to these little um, milestones that I've set for myself and these little goals that I have, you know, just always hoped I could achieve, as those things kind of line up and come to fruition, I'm really hoping that I will be able to reward you guys um, in addition to me feeling so blessed to have you all be a part of my life. I um, want to give something back to you guys too, so um, I'll talk about that a little bit more later if I remember, hopefully. <laughs> um, but I will definitely at least touch on it in future uh, vlogs. Um, that I can hopefully share some some exciting news with you guys. So I thought since it's been a while since I've really sat down with you guys, I just kind of wanted to reintroduce myself. When I first started this podcast, um, it was it was over a year ago, um, and so I've come a long way since then. And so I really just kind of wanted to sit down for a few minutes. I have my coffee in my Lindsay Loves to Knit mug. And I hope that you can, you know, if you want to just take a second, go get some tea, go get some coffee, get a blanket. I just want to sit down with you guys for a little bit and just kind of talk. Um, I do have some stuff I'm excited to show you, but first I wanted to just kind of have a get to know you time. And, you know, if you want to skip ahead, please feel free. Um, but I really wanted you to kind of have an idea of who I am and where I'm coming from. And then, you know, just to be able to have that kind of a an openness with you guys. Um, I appreciate it when people have that with me. And so I wanted to also share that with you. So I'm going to take a sip of coffee. And then I'm going to get into it. All right, so... Pretty much every single video I have with you guys, I start off with, Hey guys, this is Lindsay from The Checkered Pony. To, I say it so often <laughs> that my four-year-old actually goes around the house saying that all the time. Hey guys, <laughs> this is The Checkered Pony. So, I wanted to give you a little background. My name is Lindsay. I am a mom. I am a wife. I have four beautiful children. I've been married to my husband, who is my best friend, for 13 years. Um, we live in Vancouver, Washington, the sunny, tropical Washington state. Um, and so this climate is really ideal for knitwear and crochet and yarn craft and just everything fiber related. And so I love that about this area especially. I feel like there's so much um, just fiber enthusiasm that I just eat it up. Um, but some, some history for me is I did not grow up as a knitter. A lot of people, I'm so envious that they're like, oh, I grew, my grandma taught me to knit or crochet and I just grew up and it was just a part of life and I learned from a young age. Well, that, that wasn't my reality. Um, I do remember in college, I had an interest in, you know, learning to crochet. Um, it, actually, I take that back. There was a moment, like a moment, when I was a child, I remember um, flying on an airplane and sitting next to a lady who was crocheting. And this is a, a testament to, to you guys um, as influencers in the world. I remember as a child sitting by this lady on an airplane and she was crocheting and I was so interested in it and I mean I really I was in elementary school and I was watching her work 
and she was so patient and she actually showed me what she was working on. And while we were on the plane, on the flight, she handed me a crochet hook and gave me some yarn so that I could practice and I learned how to chain on that flight. And when we landed, she let me keep that yarn and she gave me that crochet hook. And I took it home and I crocheted chains. That's all I could do. I didn't know what else to make, so I made all these little swirly crochet chains. But I was so proud and it meant so much to me. And that was the first experience I had with, um, you know, yarn and fiber and um, crochet or knit. And then in college, I um, had a friend who knit <laughs> and I thought it was so cool. And so I was like, well, I can learn to do that. And so I bought myself some knitting needles and I got some yarn and I cast on my um, lemon tart scarf, which I have shown you guys a few times before. It took me a l several years to complete. <laughs> I found it hibernating half finished in my cedar chest. I finally completed it and made a little, um, a little um, neck warmer, but that was really the extent through college of all of my knitting experience. And so it was very limited. Um, I didn't have any really outside instruction at all. I was interested in it, um, but I just didn't really have the discipline to sit down and teach myself or approach anyone to show me what to do. I just kind of let it go until um, it was, um, November of 2017 is when um, the summer leading up to that November, it was the summer of 2017 that um, life in my family just kind of came to a screeching halt. And we had a very um, tragic loss in our family of, of someone very dear to us. and. It just kind of threw all of us into this upheaval of <laughs> we kind of all realized we don't really have any control over this life and um, we all kind of dealt with our grief and our um, our fears and our um, our issues in our own ways but um, I was really left feeling very um, helpless and alone and afraid and it was I was having a really hard time dealing with um, this loss and so in November I was like I've, I just have feel like I have to do something I just I have to throw myself into something I need something for my mind to focus on other than these feelings of grief and loss and uncertainty and so um, I took out I had years before purchased some looms some peg looms um, thinking oh that'll be an easy way to learn to knit I can that seems simple enough well then I never used them and so I unpacked those I had a couple of skeins of acrylic yarn from Walmart and I had YouTube and so I started learning how to knit on my looms and the feeling of control that I was able to to kind of to bring back um, I, I am a Christian okay and I, I do have my faith but there was still I was just still feeling very very um, lost at the time because of we were just so un uncertain of why these things were happening and so being able to make something and know exactly what I was doing and having the control over what I was making um, was very therapeutic for me and um, as I continued to learn I just I couldn't stop and so I just I was knitting on these looms I was every day for hours and hours every day and for a time that got me through um, I loved learning how to do different things and to make different things it was fun um, it wasn't just you know 
I didn't just sit there crying while I knit. I, sometimes I did, but mostly it was relaxing, and it was just a way for me to, to just relax. And so um, I, I loved it. And um, I continued loom knitting for almost a year, and then I, and I still do love loom knitting, but I, I got to a point where I had learned enough that I felt like, man, I, I really want to branch out. I really, I feel like I could push myself in this. I think I know enough that I could do more. And um, so that's when I started wanting to learn how to use my knitting needles. And so in August of 2018 is when I sought out real knitting help <laughs> and I found it at my local yarn shop Blizzard Yarn and Fiber. I love you guys. But so I would encourage you if you are wanting to branch out and you know if you're self-taught that's amazing. If you've known how to knit or crochet or weave or loom knit whatever. If you know how to spin, oh I want to learn how to spin. I really encourage you to look around your community and the your surrounding areas of your town and see if there are any local yarn shops because I promise you, I promise you, those yarn shops want you in their door. They want to help you and they're just always so nice. I pro The yarn knitting, you know, just fiber community is incredible. There's nothing like it. And so um, I was able to get my hands on some really beautiful needles. Um, I started off on some wooden needles and I got some cotton yarn and that was it. I, I just dove into needle knitting in August of 2018. And here we are in February of 2020. So that's how long I've been knitting with my needles. And I absolutely love it. I feel so proud of myself and my accomplishments, how I've pushed myself to learn, um, and how I just feel like my faith got me through those really, really dark times in my life, um, but being able to also express myself in my knitting was, I, there just, it was priceless for me to be able to have that this outlet to be able to um, really express myself. So I really do attribute my knitting to um, <laughs> being able to make it through those those really hard times. Um, so that's where I am now. S ever since um, it was probably January 2019. Oh, did I say 20? Yeah. Ever since January 2019, that's pretty much where I can say for certain that I have been strictly needles. Um, I'm sorry to say I have not picked up my crochet hooks again. I do have crochet hooks. I use them in my knitting at times, but I don't strictly crochet anymore. Um, that wonderful lady on that airplane all those years ago um, got me introduced to yarn and, and crochet and, and you know yarn work, but I've not gone back to crochet, and I really admire you guys that crochet. I think it's such a beautiful art and a beautiful craft. Um, but I, I am a knitter. I absolutely love it. I knit everywhere, all the time, any chance I get. Um, and I'm just so thankful to the whole knitting community and and all of you, too. I mean, you all are, have been so encouraging and have really motivated me to keep going um, in some of those times that I've I've pushed it to the side and you know you guys always bring me back and I love it you guys are awesome all right so that's a little bit of history about me just so you have an idea of where I'm coming from who I am um, I'm sure I'll share plenty more details in the future but um, just a little little sneak peek into the life of Lindsay and the checker pony which that's another thing. I have had um, several questions of where did you get the name Checkered Pony? It's actually a name that my husband and I uh, came up with, golly, a decade ago. Um, 
of, you know, if I was to ever have my own business or my own shop or my own store, what would I want it to be called? And I've, I'm, I've always been a horse girl. And I just, I was like, we, we came up with the name Checkered Pony and it's just been something I've kept in my pocket, just waiting to use it. And now I'm like, there's, why wait? Okay. Three years ago, our lives were turned upside down and we realized, don't wait. <laughs> don't just keep things to yourself. Don't just keep them hidden. Today is the day to make stuff happen. Okay. Because there's no guarantee for tomorrow. We need to make the most of what we have and the time we have right now. So everything for me is the checkered pony, okay? And I'm actually gonna go into a little bit more detail of that because I have my checkered pony YouTube channel, um, which is so much fun. I also have, um, I'm also on Instagram as the checkered pony, but it's the underscore checkered underscore pony. So if you want to go to Instagram and look me up there, I'll put the um, my Instagram name in the link below or in the comment description below. That's the word. Um, but also, I have started up, da -da -da, I've started up an eBay store. And here's why. <laughs> my amazing brother-in-law, Joshua Duke, has um he has his own youtube channel totally go check him out i will also put his information in the description below but he is doing something called adventures in reselling and he and my sister have their own retail um reselling business and they are thriving absolutely thriving i'm so excited for them and proud of them and i wish them all the best um but he has been starting um making some kind of instructional, motivational, encouragement videos of how to start your own resale business. And me being the excellent sister-in-law that I am, I'm totally doing the whole thing. And so one of his first suggestions is to just go around your house and find some things that you can sell and list them on eBay. Go around your house, find loose change, and that's what you have to start with. And I'll actually show you. This is the start of my business. <laughs> now, and I'm absolutely determined to do this. I need to go to the bank and cash in all of my change. I'm guessing I probably have $20, $25 in change in there. That's a lot of quarters. Um, and so that is going to be what is going to fund the rest of my business. That's my ground. I'm going to build from there. Um, and that's what I will allow myself to use to buy other things to sell. Now, the difference in my eBay store is my eBay store is called Checkered Pony Resale. It's all one word, Checkered Pony Resale. And right now I have um, several um, yarn winders for sale on there that I have, I have just I've acquired a whole stash of these things okay they're brand new in the boxes never been opened and I was like I will sell these these are gonna be the base for my business now my goal is to go out and I'm going to be looking for um, crafting knitting crochet fiber etc type items to bring into my eBay store to resell so I will make them available to you guys. I'm only looking for quality. I'm not just gonna be on there selling a whole bunch of junk, okay? I will, in the um, coming weeks, I'm going to be de-stashing my yarn. I have so much yarn, I will never be able to use it in a lifetime. And so I want to give you guys the opportunity to snag some of it. So I'm gonna be listing a lot of my um, really great quality yarn. A lot of it is all wool. I've got some beautiful um, I do have some acrylics, but they're gorgeous. Um, and so I'm going to be listing those on eBay. I'm going to have some, just all kinds of stuff. I'm not going to go into a ton of detail, but that is my plan for the checkered pony for the immediate future. Okay. I'll have my YouTube channel. I'm on Instagram that I try to use. I'll try to use it a lot more often. I'm a lot more better. I'm a, a lot better about being on YouTube than I am 
Instagram, but it's still there. And then my eBay store. My goals with my eBay store though are I want to be able to earn enough that I can still maintain going out and looking for items to resell, but my goal is to be able to also put aside enough to purchase for myself a video light, a camera light, and a camera holder. If I could turn my, I'm on my phone right now, if I could turn this around and show you <laughs> the setup that I have right now just to hold up my phone so I could make this video, you would laugh so hard. It's, it's, yeah, pretty backwoods right now. I would love to have a phone stand with a light so that I look good. <laughs> So that's one of my goals. That's probably my number one goal for now. And just to earn enough to, to the side in addition to what I would like to have to be able to still purchase, you know, inventory for my eBay store, I want to be able to put aside enough to get myself the light and the phone holder. And then after that, my next goal will be to buy myself a microphone. I know sometimes it's hard to hear me and I would love to get myself a microphone to use. So those are my business goals. Um, and then in the future, <clears throat> my third goal would be to eventually have my Checkered Pony website back open. Um, if you guys have been with me from the start, I originally had my own um, Shopify store where I was the Checkered Pony store and all of the items that I had knit, mo a lot of them were loom knits. Um, some of them were needle knits, but they were very simple. Um, but I had all of those items available on my store. And just after a year of having that, my husband and I felt like it just wasn't the right time. And so my hope is that as my skills increase and as my, um, just the, the items that I'm able to produce, um, as I get better at making them and they're higher quality, that I will be able to reopen that store and have things available um, for you guys. Um, some examples are, like I said, I'm now strictly needle knitting. So the items that I'm making are a, quite a bit more complex and I'm using beautiful patterns. I'm using the highest quality yarn um, I'm really very particular when it comes to um, finishing items. I finish them well and I finish them right. Um, I'm also sewing. I'm making project bags. I have started learning embroidery. Um, and so, you know, there's a lot of skills that I am, I'm learning here and there that hopefully I will be able to incorporate into my Checkered Pony store. Um, that is the furthest goal for now. Uh, right now, I'm just going to focus on YouTube, eBay, and Instagram. That is enough for me right now. Um, but, you know, it's good to have goals. I would encourage you guys to, to set even just some little goals for yourself. Like my brother-in-law said, just starting with finding loose change and saying, okay, this is the money I'm going to use to start my business. If it's $5, great. If it's $10, fine. Go out and find something that you see that you know you could sell it for more than what you're paying for it. Then the money that you earn from that, you then use to go out and, and purchase something new. Maybe then you could get two things instead of just one. And it's just starting with something small and making it into something bigger. And so I really encourage you guys to, to try it. I would love it if it works out for you guys as well as it's worked for me and it's worked for my family. Um, it, it really can work for anyone. Um, <clears throat> all right, so that is all the business. Okay, guys, we've made it this far. If you have stuck with me so far, you guys are amazing. I'm so happy that, that you're here. All right, coffee. Very good. Okay, so now we're going to get into the yarn and the knitting and the whips and the finished objects. Whew, this is the problem about me not <laughs> being here with you guys a lot more regularly is I have so much, I have so much that 
if I was to pull out every thing that I have either acquired or purchased or collected, we'd be here all day. Okay, so I really just tried to limit it <laughs> to the things that I really thought you'd be really interested in seeing. So I'll start with my um, my whips, my works in progress. <laughs> and I have my peacock project bag here. This is an example of my sewing. Okay, that now this was like the second bag I ever sewed. So it's definitely mine because it's kind of a prototype. But what I like to do is I have them fully lined. There's pockets inside, but I like to flip them open so it's just a nice big bucket. Okay, and inside I have my Daxis shawl that I have been knitting from my um, my Knit Crate subscriptions. And so this is the yarn that I've been using, and this is La Brabis, La Brabi Marled Sock. I um, this is I believe this was the first yarn I ever got from Knit Crate when I first joined a year ago, two years ago. It's been a while. I think it has to have been two years ago. Um, and I finally cast on the project of the Daxis shawl. I'm really sorry, I don't have a picture for you to show you, but I will put um, a link to the pattern on Ravelry in the description below. And also I will include a link to Knit Crate along with my referral code so that if you were, if you like, if you would like to join Knit Crate, it's a monthly subscription. There's several different crates you can choose from every month. You can skip, you can choose your color, themes, tons of stuff to be able to customize it. Um, but if you use my referral code, your first month of Knit Crate is only five bucks. Plus I get a little kickback and that's kind of awesome because then that allows me to definitely be able to get a crate to show you guys and to use and make something new. All right, but this is the Daxis shawl and I might actually have to stand up because this is quite large. Oh, it's still going. All right, now I'm gonna tell you, <laughs> we're in February of 2020. I started this shawl in August of 2019. <laughs> This has been a, a labor, but I will tell you, I have not been working on this as, as often as I probably should. Um, this has been a project that has traveled with me on at least <clears throat> four airplane rides to different places um, across the United States. This is, was my, my, yeah, my airplane knit. Um, <clears throat> and it's been just really a project that I take with me to work on when I just go places um, because it's it's it takes some time okay this this yarn is is pretty itty bitty and the pattern uh, really needed me to focus be able to pay attention but I'm happy to say I mean granted I still have a fair amount um, but I'm in a part of this project where it should be moving a lot um, more quickly. Um, it was started off as a, um, you know, knit tin, purl tin across in a checkered, like a basket weave pattern, and now it's just moved on to a stockinette section, which is a lot more simple. So um, hopefully, eh, I'll have this done fairly soon, it's going to be huge. This is absolutely a huge project, but I think um, this yarn is just so versatile and it's so beautiful that it will be something that I can use all the time. Um, so there's that, my Daxis shawl. I'd say it's probably two thirds complete. That's a, I think that's a fair, fair amount. Okay, so now, uh, the next thing I will tell you about, shh, my <laughs> Quinn's in here with me. <clears throat> Be careful, please. Um, coming up in about a week and a half, yes, about a week and a half, is something in my part of the world called the Rose City Yarn Crawl. 
It's a yearly yarn crawl. There are 10 shops that are that are participating in it where we have three or four days to visit each of the shops and collect patterns and buttons and all kinds of stuff. But one of the fun things that uh, we get to do is a mystery knit along or a mis and or a mystery crochet along. I don't crochet, but I knit. And so last year was my first year doing it. And we did the mystery. I did the mystery knit along. It was gorgeous, beautiful shawl. This year again, um, for the knit along, they have a a shawl. <clears throat> it doesn't have a name yet because it's a mystery. Um, but I'm darn near done with it. Um, actually, okay. So technically, I'm done with it. I followed the pattern to the T. I followed it every step I didn't you know make didn't waver off of the pattern whatsoever I finished everything but I still had like a third of each of my two colors they were that was required to have two colors of a fingering weight yarn so I had um, <clears throat> let's see. I can get it I had mrs. Babs or miss Babs sorry miss mrs. Um, a gray, it's called, the color away was lichen, um, in it, the yummy two ply from Miss Babs. And then I had a, um, oh dear, hold on. Come back. Oh dear. And I, you know, I can't remember, I actually can't remember the name of this yarn. Um, but it is a, it has a shimmer in it. It has some Stellina. I got it from Blizzard Yarn and Fiber. Um, but it's, it's Merino wool and cashmere. Oh, so, so soft. Um, and so I had both of my colors. Well, the investment that I put into this shawl to buy my yarn, it's only once a year, so I figured I'd splurge a little bit. <laughs> Guys, I invested some money in this shawl, okay? And so when I got to the end of the pattern and I realized, oh my goodness, I still have almost nearly 40 grams left in each of my colors, I was like, surely there has to be something else I can do. So I've been adding to my shawl. I've been using elements from the pattern that we made in this shawl, but I've been just kind of re-adding them in to use up the rest of my yarn. So here is what, well, okay, I'll start from the bottom. Here's what I've done so far. And it's kind of a, has a mosaic um, pattern to it. There's stripes, there's some lace, there's some seed stitch down here. Um, but then when we got to this section of mosaic, the pattern called for it to be, the pattern called for it to be done. And I was like, I saw so much yarn. So I've been actually making up my own sections. I've added in some stripes, I've added in some more lace, and then from there we'll just see because I still have, oh dear, um, you know, this much, it's getting all tangled, <laughs> um, of my merino cashmere, and then I still have this much of my gray. Oh my goodness, I mean, seriously, I've got to use it. So hopefully, <clears throat> my goal was to have this finished and blocked um, by Friday of this week, <laughs> just like four days away because I wanted to wear it out on, I have a date with my husband on Saturday, <laughs> and I wanted to wear it early, but as long as it's done by the yarn crawl two we in a week and a half, I'll be, um, I'll be happy enough. No, 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 leave those alone, please. <clears throat> so, <coughs> I'm so sorry, I need some coffee. So that is my Rose City Yarn Crawl Mystery knit along. I'm just going to put this away really fast. I actually have this in another project bag that I made that was, <laughs> um, it's this one. And again, this is a prototype, just seeing what am I capable of. And so I've got that in here. <clears throat> All right. So, and then the third um, thing is I'm still working on my Cozy Memories blanket. I didn't bring that up to show you, but I've now expanded it to a 5 by 5 square. So I've got 25 squares all together. 
going to continue adding to that and I'll be sure to show you that next time. Um, but then the other thing that I have is um, a knit along that is happening at my local yarn shop, Blizzard Yarn and Fiber. Seriously love you guys. Um, and so they have started working on a pattern called the Vintage Fremont. And so here's all I've gotten so far with this. It's a um, asymmetrical shawl. It's, it's probably a shawlette. Um, it just requires 100 grams of uh, fingering weight yarn. And the suggested yarn was um, Malabrigo Sock. And so I have the color Ochre. And it's here in my super cute little yarn bag that I just got from Knit Crate. Oh my word, look at these. Isn't that just so cute? So pretty. And I love <laughs> this bag and this color yarn together. And I just, I put it up here and I just love to look at it. So beautiful. Um, so that's my other, my other whip work in progress. Now, finished objects. Woo, got a couple. The first thing that I, um, a, well, a few things that I need to say. Um, I, hold on. Yes. A few things I need to say. I have knit up a storm. <laughs> I have had a couple of objects that I made and then I took to our annual church bazaar and then I sold them. So I don't even have them to show you and I really wish that I did um, because one of the objects that I made were some fingerless mitts in Malabrigo, um, I think it was Rios, but it was the color Frank Ochre. I love Ochre and Frank Ochre. They're just so beautiful. I love those colors. Um, and so I made some fingerless mitts in a pattern called Vancouver Fog. And so I love them so much. Um, after they were finished, I ended up gifting them to someone that I just love. And so I was happy to give them away. But then I forgot I didn't even take pictures of them to show you. And I'm so sad because they were just gorgeous. Um, but I went ahead and I made them over again. Now this is an acrylic yarn. Um, it feels like butter. Um, but I went ahead and remade them just so I could um, show you guys kind of what they look like. I will have these for sale, maybe. Although my daughter keeps asking for them, so I will most likely just give them to her, if I'm totally honest. And then I will just remake these again. Um, and I have a few other um, different colorways of... I loved how the Malabrigo Rios worked up in this pattern. It was just gorgeous. Um, but this is... this Guys, this was my first time doing cables. Um, and so I was really happy with how they came out. Um, just a simple little fingerless mitt. And I can pop one on for you. I'll show it to you. <laughs> but they're super cozy, really warm. I didn't want them too long because I, I get, it's weird. Okay, guys, I feel like I get claustrophobic on my hands. My hands start to sweat really bad if like I feel like I'm closed in too much. I like to still have my fingers. So it didn't make them too terribly long at the fingertip. Some I the next pair that I make I probably will make a tiny bit longer just to maybe come up to the edge of my pinky. Um, but still I love them and my daughters love them. So Vancouver Fog Fingerless Mitts. I'll put a link to Ravelry in the description. Then, um, I also made a hat called Wherever It Points, and I actually made several of these and was able to have them at my bazaar, and so there was just one that I had left, just so I can show you how pretty it worked up. This pattern is gorgeous, and I will, have, I will put the link in the description, because um, these are super easy. It looks so complicated, um, but it's just that stranded color work and it's really not difficult and they're super super cute this is an acrylic yarn that I just had around the house um, something I've kind of realized is that for my the bazaars um, I really feel like people are just looking really want to bargain um, it's it's not incredibly often that I feel like someone is is truly looking for um, all of the luxurious yarns that I use at times because uh, they don't want to pay that much you know I still have some of those things available but I'm finding that my bread and butter guys it's using acrylic yarn in a pretty pattern a beautiful pattern 
that people can afford. And so I price these to sell and they sell. So here's an idea for you. Um, but wherever it points hat, <clears throat> super cute. Um, <clears throat> I also made this uh, cowl. It's called the Smoky Mountain Mobius Cowl. I got this from Blueprint. That's what it was. Um, I tried out some Blueprint patterns. Love Blueprint. If you can get a discount code and and get a kit, they send you the yarn, they send you the pattern, they send you like this bag that it all comes in, they send you your like a sleeve for your pattern. It is really nice. Um, and so this is the Mobius um, cowl that I knit. And I do like it. Um, I wit I and I blocked it, but it still is rolling a lot. And so I'm wondering if I was to add in, you know, just kind of tweak the pattern a tiny bit. Um, maybe it wouldn't roll so bad. Um, but it's an acrylic yarn. It was super, super fast. I did it in one day. Um, and so it was, you know, very, very easy. Um, I would probably, I might shorten it just a little bit. I think that's something I might do. But there's the Mobius cowl. That one's done. Um, here is a hat, the Frozen Snowflakes beanie, also a blueprint pattern. And I ended up making two or three of these and then they all sold. They were just gone. Um, they were the first ones to go. Again, super simple patterns, just the stranded color work. Um, and in different colors, they were gorgeous. Like, they were seriously beautiful. I will definitely be making more of these uh, to have for the um, my bazaar next year. I just don't have any to show you because I sold them all. And then the last finished object that I have to show you today is the hipster uh, shawl by Hokey Locatelli. This was another knit along that my local yarn shop did and I was only able to go like two times out of like the month that they month and a half that they met and the first time I went I was almost halfway done with my shawl. I was so excited to start it. Um, and so this is mine and I used um, Blue Moon Silky, Tarhi, Targi, Targi, Tarhi, Silky Singles, I think is what I used. Um, but it's by Blue Moon Fiber, and it's beautiful. It's a single, it's a single ply yarn. But um, the only thing I changed about the pattern is, oh, I did not add the tassels. I love the tassels in this picture with that color, but I didn't feel like it would really do much for mine, um, for my shawl. <laughs> I'll show you. But I really do love this shawl. It's super comfy. It's, it's, um, it's Tessa silk, um, undyed Tessa, or undyed, I don't know, was it undyed? I don't remember. I don't see how it could be purple if it's not dyed. Anyway, off, totally off topic. But it's Tessa Silk, so it's super soft, super warm, um, but I love the pattern. It's really beautiful. So this is the Hipster Shawl by Hohi, Hohi Locatelli. This one's definitely mine. And this is another one that I'd love to make again. Um, and then, actually, I take it back. There's one more finished object that I want to show you guys for a reason. And it is the sweater that I'm wearing. I cannot remember the name of this pattern. It was just a free pattern that I found online. And I showed it to you guys last time when I had my, my podcast. Um, but I have since finished it. I finished both sleeves. Um, I finished the entire body of it. It is a high-ho, high-ho, high-low sweater. Um, I made it in the Madeline Tosh Farm Twist yarn. The colorway was called Then Luna Lovegood Fed the Thestrals. But here's the thing. It was a lot of fun to make. I learned so much about knitting a sweater. I also learned a lot about what yarns to choose for projects and how you have to be careful 
when choosing yarns because different yarns actually have a different kind of a weight to them. I know that probably seems like something that's so obvious, but I love this yarn so much, but I don't like the way that it feels in the form of a sweater, if that makes any sense at all. So I wore this today just to show you guys that I did finish it. I blocked it and everything. The pattern is beautiful. I will probably remake this pattern at some point. I just will probably change it. I'll probably take out this bottom row of eyelets. Um, I probably will not do the high-low. I might just do more of a, you know, crop sweater. I would definitely want to finish the sleeves. Um, and I would probably do it in a semi-solid, not so much of a variegated yarn. Um, so, with that being said, I hope we all appreciate this sweater now because I'm actually going to deconstruct this sweater. This is three hanks of Madeline Tosh Farm Twist and I am certain that I could use it to make some other items that would be a lot more practical and items that I would use a lot more often than this sweater. I'm happy, I love the colors, you know, it was fun to make, I made it quickly, it was easy, but it's just not something that I'm really going to use a lot. And so I would much rather use my yarn that I invested in into, and put it into something that I will really, really, really use a lot. So I will be deconstructing the sweater and checking back with you guys and, and showing you my progress and ideas as I decide what to do with all of this yarn. So, um, let's see, um, my, moving on to acquisitions, <laughs> um, just a few things, I, again, I'm not going to go into all the yarn that I have acquired, that would just be, that would just be silly, be silly, um, but some just basics, like some kind of knitter, crocheter, bread and butter, um, a few things that I've invested in. I finally got myself some blocking mats and I've put this off for a really, really long time because I have just been, <laughs> I'm so almost embarrassed to say this. I've just been, when I block my items, I, I gently rinse them and wash them and get them wet and then I stretch them out and I pin them to my carpet. And I don't know if that's a bad thing, but it's just always what I've done. So I'm totally like eyeballing how I'm pinning this thing out and how I'm stretching it. And you know, it, it's worked. It's worked. We get by with what we, what we can do. We do our best. That's, that's all we can do. But I was finally like, you know what? I'm going to look into these blocking mats. And then I was like, oh, I think I might really like to try that. So just to show you, because I was so <clears throat> unaware. So blocking mats are different in that, let's see if I have two, no, these don't, <clears throat> well they might, I don't know, yeah. Blocking mats are different because they have a, a um, one inch by one inch grid on them so that you can put them together <laughs> and actually pin out your projects into um, more correct and exact sizes and shapes. And so I went ahead and allowed myself to get some blocking mats. I got these off of Amazon and these are <laughs> Hephaestus, I don't know, you tell me, crafts. Um, they're blocking mats. Um, this particular one, it comes in a box. I really like this um, so that I can keep them stored together but then when I got these I also got it sent me a hundred t-pins and a tape measure um, if you are not aware what of what a t-pin is it is this it's a it's a straight pin Ooh, I'm not gonna be able to see it it's a straight pin but they're um, they're thicker than like sewing pins and I think <clears throat> the idea is with the T at the top you could actually um, run blocking wires through it. I 
maybe I don't know I've not used these before I'm so excited and then a tape measure <clears throat> you always need that so I got some blocking mats yay I also went ahead and finally got myself some blocking combs I got the knitters pride um, just the the beige ones um, just because I'm more of a neutral person but they are um, blocking combs so that I'm not actually having to pin out every single thing I can actually just pin out an entire section so it helps um, give a more universal tension um, across parts of the project um, I think that'll that'll really help me and so there's two different sizes there's the large size and then there's the smaller size the smaller size has four pins and the larger size has one two three four five six seven eight eight pins so I'm really excited to use these on my shawl from the Rose City Yarn Crawl once it's finished and I'm able to block that. Finally got myself some blocking combs. Yay me! Um, and then, let's see, the only other things I have um, are, um, I've gotten a few books. I told you I had started learning some embroidery and here's just a beautiful book that I picked up. Um, that has all types of um, embroidery um, patterns in it for um, ideas for throughout the year. It's called A Year of Embroidery, and it's just beautiful. I love the pictures in it. I mean, it's just gorgeous. And so I've, I've picked that up just as some inspiration for um, some embroidery projects. I had one project that I did some embroidery on that I totally just was making it up as I went, but it turned out so pretty, but then again, I sold it at the bazaar. <laughs> um, I recently took a trip to Nashville and went to a couple of local yarn shops around my hometown of Nashville, Tennessee. Mm, I miss that place. Um, but one of the yarn shops I went to was called House of Yarn. Gorgeous, gorgeous shop. And I picked up their um, the Block a Month Afghan I'm having technical issues today, so I'm gonna go ahead and sign off for today. <laughs> but I promise you, I will be a lot more frequent in my posts and my videos. Um, I will bring you the good, the bad, the ugly, the happy, the triumphant, the downfalls, the struggles, everything real life, Lindsay, I'm going to bring to you. Um, I'm happy to share what's going on with me. Um, make sure you like and subscribe to the Checkered Pony. Um, head over to Checkered Pony Resale on eBay uh, to see what little things I have here and there. I'm going to have some pretty sweet things coming up. Um, and then make sure you go over to um, my Instagram, the underscore checkered underscore pony. Um, follow me on Instagram. I'll post things periodically there too. And then also, if you're on Ravelry, I am just the checkered pony on Ravelry. And I have a, whole, a group set up. You can join in. Uh, let me know who you are. Tell me about yourself. I have all the links to my vlog entries on that page um, on Ravelry. So you're welcome to join me there as well. I hope you guys have a great week. And I will look forward to talking to you soon. Be kind to one another, okay? Bye, guys.